Hello friends, happy weekend. Today I will be sharing how I worked with mixed media as well as painting explorations. I also wanted to demonstrate the difference between watercolor and acrylic ink. As for my paper, this is my preferred sketchbook because it is cheap and it comes with a ton of pages. I also opt for an old washcloth over paper towels because I don't have to pause my process and replace the paper towel as often. As a rule of thumb, I use a medium-sized round brush to start with because it can hold a lot of water and it has a precise point, allowing me to make a variety of marks that blend into one another. I also wanted to demonstrate the difference between watercolor and acrylic ink. Since I usually would paint with acrylic ink if I wanted to do a mixed media painting specifically. A big reason for this is because the pigments use acrylic rather than gum arabic as a binder, making each mark permanent on the page and it doesn't lift when you put down different layers of wet mediums, such as matte or gloss mediums. The finish of acrylic ink does have a slight sheen to it, so if you don't like that shiny plastic finish, Acrylic gouache is better because it dries matte and flat if applied correctly. After warming up with the mixed media paper, I would then move on to working with Yupo paper, since this is a bit more expensive than the sketchbook and the surface is less forgiving. I start with the dry mediums this time because I know the wax on the soft color pencils are somewhat water resistant, and that leaves an interesting effect when I wash over with ink later. I also love working with color pencils that have a light value, so I would typically have a handful of different tinted grays. Another technique I like is when I work over a dark mark with the light gray, it streaks and smears on the Yupo. Another thing I love to experiment with is combining my inks with non-art mediums. So salt is a common one. I've also tried coffee, which left this really interesting gradient of colors. And as you saw earlier, I was playing with the dish soap too. I sometimes imagine my process as a puzzle. I would build boxes and compartments and fill them with different colors, limiting myself to a specific gamut as an exercise. Gamut is sort of the breadth of color, like a limited palette has a specific gamut, so the produced paintings will have a certain mood or atmosphere.
The truth is, successful artists have gone through so much trial and error, so many mistakes, that their portfolio or famous works are probably just a tiny percentage of all the work they've actually created throughout their career. So as artists, especially students, it's important to build up on mileage and getting enough practice under your belt rather than pushing out good pieces back to back to back just so you can prove to yourself that you don't suck at art. I like working with either monochromatic or complementary color schemes and I occasionally try to break the rule at random, but it's a hit or miss. This brings me to my next point, which is that these exercises aren't meant to be final products, so for me, it's about quantity over quality. What I mean by this is that I am pushing myself to work quickly as I practice and learn about each medium's characteristics and how they interact with each other, rather than if the overall painting looks good or not. When I am finished, I can step back and look at the whole body of work and think about what it is I want to keep and what I don't like. I take bits and pieces from each drawing or painting, and I can combine it again in the future for refinement. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it served as a helpful resource for those who want to try more experimental approaches in terms of drawing methods. Have a wonderful day or night, and I will talk to you soon.